this is the uh, first episode of a new season of Comic Point, and I got myself and Yo a Nerd reading uh, reading two comics this week. Yes, what's good, y'all? How y'all doing today? Right on, man. We got a uh, we got Moon Knight in preparation for the new TV show. We got Ironheart also in preparation for the new TV show. There you go. You got them both up there. And uh, I read the first four issues of Moon Knight, and I read the first three issues of Ironheart, and like it was a good story. Like both of them, both of them like were a good story. But uh, let's let's start with Ironheart first. Okay, let's start with Ironheart. So, so one thing with Ironheart with this this one is like this volume that we started with actually is kind of her. It's her first solo series, like not being under you know like Iron Man's name. And so, so it doesn't really touch on her origins, but she does have a comic out that does have her origin. I actually think I got it right. And here. that that comes up a lot too. Like people keep referring to her as a little iron or iron person or iron girl. And like she hates that. Yeah, yeah. She's iron heart. Like that's her jump. But this story basically that we were reading takes place where her basically coming into her own as being Ironheart and she actually is at MIT where she has her own laboratory right. which is fire which is pretty dope uh did you peep her interactions with like the with the uh with like the people that were coming to look at her yeah. lab and everything she was like super frustrated with all of yeah. you being at her laboratory oh yeah so that that part right there that was is what really made me like her character. Like she was basically just like y'all y'all shouldn't even be in my lab anyway. So like they was mad cuz something like had went off. Like some her, like, uh, her arm cannon. Yeah. Yeah, it had went off and all of them were like they was all scared and everything. She was like, "Yeah, but y'all shouldn't even be in here anyway." <laughs> like that and She was right though. Yeah. She was 100% right. She was 100% but that scene is really what made me like really. It's really early. It's literally like the first couple the pages. First couple of pages, yeah. She was like going yeah. out on patrol, like, and she comes back to her lab, like they're all just sitting there waiting for her. Yeah, because it reminds me of like it reminds me a lot of. I told my sister this. It reminds me of her, like if she was a superhero, like so. It, that's one reason why I really liked her character, because like she just she, they was just in her space and she just was not having it, bro. <laughs> like she was. She was seriously not having it. And like that's that's the cool thing I like about this character. Like she has like this this uh this grit about her. Like she you know she she doesn't give a crap. Like she tells people to her face, like you know, like in the nicest way possible. Because you know, her mother her mother taught her well. Like uh, I don't really need this kind of crap right now. I got a lot of things going on, and like yeah. her mental struggles really like follow her along. But, like she she's really good at reserving herself. Like when all this kind of stuff really goes down. Yeah, facts. But yeah, because she could easily just pop off. Just yeah. think, about, think about all the stuff that she just been through in her life, and then like she could easily just pop off. You feel like me? Her, her best friend and her stepdad and her father are all dead, and like and that that lives with her like yeah. constantly. Constant, like her dad, her her actual dad died before she knew him, but her stepdad died. I think I think her best friend and her stepdad died both at a picnic, I believe. Right. Uh, they died at a picnic where this shooting happened because they lived in Chicago and like it was kind of speaking to like you know the violence and stuff that was going on in Chicago at the time. So they end up dying at this picnic, and then so like yo, she been through a lot. And then, you know, especially becoming a superhero, she a genius. Like, yeah. I think she, don't quote me on this, I could be wrong, but she graduated high school at like 13 or something and went to MIT or like, she was she was real young. I don't, maybe not 13, don't quote me, but like maybe 13 to 15 is when she went into like college. And we did see her like in high school when she was like eight or nine. Facts, fact, yep, yep, facts. Yeah. Like she was, she's been a, she was, a, she just different. She different. <laughs> she definitely different. But it, it touches like on a lot of different stuff too. Like you know, she has to do like this little lost girl kind of thing going on. Like it, it reminds me of uh, you remember like the old like a Superman show when when Supergirl showed up and like mm -hmm. she was like a fish out of water. I get that vibe from her inside of the story. I also get like you know she doesn't know what kind of superhero she wants to be. I get that from this story. She also. Uh, right. Talks about her and the champions and like how they're not really working out like like they were before like so like she's like an army of one and like you feel that in the story also there's like a lot of stuff that she's going through on top of her family stuff 
I'm talking about like the being best friends with uh with their childhood neighbor Xavier. It's like a lot of stuff like being piled on top of her, and like it's it's all about us watching her struggle through all this, and I can even like identifying with supervillains right. at a certain point. Right, like she, yeah, because like you said, she's dealing with a lot. Like she's yeah. also going, she's at MIT, you know. Uh, in the recent story, they took like they took all her stuff like the Stark industry I believe like took all her stuff and everything and also it also before this story I think she was dealing with her evil AI which was I think Tony's AI yeah and that's why she yeah. had to get like a new AI which is actually cool because her new AI is her best it's friend her best Natalie, friend Natalie. Like, yeah 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 <laughs> and then so that's pretty cool because it's basically like that that always trips me out that like bruh like it's just based off her memories of the girl and then it just talks to her like she's actually the girl it, it gives like some some very weird layers to this story because like she seems to be unfazed and like her her best friend is this ai and like you know she's having conversations while she's on like on the train she's uh, I wouldn't think she was unfazed because like she was so if you so the one part like she like she had she only she basically only really took a second to kind of like deal with it but it was like there was a part where she wasn't even talking to her and then she was just kind of like dealing with the fact that her ai said okay here go here go right here it's just like she just uh she's like you don't want to talk about it and she just asked her for like damage reports and everything yeah she basically just took a second to like you know get it through her head that you know her best friend is back in her head you feel me like she's her ai now so i mean i wouldn't say she was unfazed i think it just she was quick just to uh, adapt to it you get what i'm saying i get that i, like, I think that. it still took her like a second to you know that quick second like okay this is kind of weird but would you jump back you, into it would you compare her to iron man at all like would you would you give like like see do you see like any tony stark vibes in her character this is what i like about riri Yes, but completely not. I think they're both geniuses, so they basically put themselves in that same realm of like people. You feel me? Yeah. Like they they're in like the same. They they have like the same wavelength. You get me? But she is her own character. Like I don't see her as a real extension of Tony, besides the fact that she has an iron suit. Okay. You feel me? Yeah, I feel that. So I yeah. think I think they do have a lot of similarities because they're in the same realm of people. But I think she is her own character, and that's what I like. That's what I really, really like that she is her own thing. It kind of reminds me of you know Miles, Miles Morales. Yeah, like he has some similarities to Peter Parker me, with Peter Parker, but to Ultimate Peter Parker, really? Yeah. Yes, but he is. His own his person. Own yeah. He's his own person. Like he he isn't like a full on carbon just copy. Like an ex- yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel that. Yeah. So what, I, that's actually a good question. I like that. What do you think about Midnight Midnight Fire? Midnight Fire. So my man's he's tough. So badass. I like him. Yeah. So one thing I like is that they brought the Ten Rings into it. I think the Ten Rings is is kind of underused in the yeah. Marvel universe. I yeah. feel like they could be kind of like I feel like they use the hand so much more or, or Cobra so much. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like they use the hand and Cobra a lot, which both of those are cool. I yeah. have no problem with neither one of those. I like both of those. But like, why why don't we get enough Ten Ten Rings love? You feel me? Like I feel like we don't get enough enough of that and i feel like like it's a good setup like for her character if they're going to establish her they'd be like like a bigger character inside this story i know like this this book is something about two years old but uh the art is fantastic the story is amazing and like in and seeing riri like accept that ten ring um trinket from clash like and also from uh uh, midnight is it's interesting to see like how uh how she's gonna go through this process oh thank you for thank you for uh reminding me what my man's name was at the beginning uh clash uh the guy she fought the first that gave her the ring and thing at first yeah thank you i totally forgot what his yeah. name was <laughs> but yeah she i feel like like you said she was going through so much that when she got it you know she was kind of like you know like 
hey, you know, maybe. But I think also the fact when she got it from uh, Midnight Fire, the fact that he had kidnapped that girl. Yeah. Definitely did not help his stance. No, no. <laughs> Cause she went off on him. She went <laughs> and like she, she like, like got a little dual traumatic, like went to a, a instant where she fought Thanos and like like saw like a traumatic experience with that whole thing and just like she yeah. snapped on him. Yeah. Yeah, but I like Midnight Fire. Like he has much more of a bigger deal after this, the volume after this, but like, I really liked him because he gave his whole, like, uh, backstory. I'm actually trying to find the page as I speak. So, but he, so uh, issue four, yeah. Yeah. It goes to I'm Cambodia, at, yeah. Yeah, where it goes, like, his whole backstory about how he trained and, like, how he honed his abilities. I love those. I love those where, you know, it's like the villain is, like, they went through they went through a hard life, they whole they're, life. They're, they're not all bad guys inside of them, yeah. Yeah, they're not all bad guys. They just went through a hard-ass life and just adapted to their hard-ass life, and this is the person that they have become. You feel me? I feel like, that. I really, I really do. And I want to – I feel like he's going to be around for a while. If he shows up in a second volume, like you, said, like you say he does, it's going to be cool to see him, like, do his thing inside that second volume, too. I'm pretty sure, like, he gets a little bit more, a little more depth they go a little bit more like like thorough with his story and like you 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 feel something for his character. Yeah, they definitely do in the second volume. We in this volume, he's more of just kind of like a uh low-key cool villain so far, but they do go deeper into him. But like Amber, like one really small thing, but this is always kind of a big thing when it comes to superheroes and villains. His design is fire. His design I mean, is tough. I mean, like watching those, those superhero poses, like him flying in the air, like watch like that suit itself, man, like with the with the face guard. Like yeah. yo, he looks like, like ninja going on like with his suit, dude. Facts. <laughs> I mean, who yeah. so good. Like 100 percent agree with that. But also one thing that I just this actually just popped into my head. We we kind of touched on it a little bit, but like her. Like being from Chicago and everything, like I think yeah. it really shows that in this comic, like you, it's especially when she shows her flashbacks to her childhood. Because so I'm actually looking at a page right now where uh she's talking to my man's uh what's his name Xavier, I believe. Xavier, her, yeah, her yeah, childhood Xavier. neighbor, yeah. Yep, she's talking to him like they cleaning up. I believe after the fight, yeah, they're cleaning up after the fight, and then they're basically just going through the um basically. To going through different shots of her childhood and i think it that really shows the authentic like makes it feel authentic because like me and you talked about this is actually written by uh eve ewing yeah who, who i didn't never heard of her before this but i once i read it when i read it i was like bro this feels so authentic and i yeah. know that she was created by re was created by michael Brian ben michael bendis Benders, yeah, who's a yeah. white guy. Mm. And I was like, bro, there's no way a white guy is writing this comic. Bro, there's no way. Not this one. Not, Not this, this one. one. <laughs> no. No, no, no. So I looked it up and I looked around. I'm like, bro, she's actually a, a writer from Chicago. And that, so, that was that was one of the things like that got us to read this comic book in the first place. Like we didn't both of us didn't know that a black woman was writing the Ironheart series. So yeah. Exactly. So like her and then she her being a black woman from Chicago. And also Riri being a black woman from Chicago, like it made it so authentic, and like check, you can really check. feel that. It really did. Like uh, it, it didn't feel shoehorned. It didn't feel forced. Like uh, <laughs> like the the mannerisms, like of her mom, like talking about how she's gonna embarrass her in front of her friend, like right, making, making right. jokes about how she's gonna eat up all the food inside the house. Like uh, it yeah. just it just felt real. You know what I mean? It did. It felt like you was talking to your own mom. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, those her the scenes with her mom are pretty much the best ones because her mom be getting on her, bro. Did they leave her under the popcorn? She losing the crap over that. <laughs> Yo, like she be really getting on her about stuff your moms will really get on you about, and that's why I didn't think this joint is just. This one was a really great comic for me, especially for like newer, a newer black superhero. Yeah. Is because it really the you have a black writer writing it and it's authentic, feels authentic, and yeah. it's fresh. Like this doesn't seem like a carbon copy. Like like we said earlier, like 
like that's one of my problems with Miles Morales sometimes is his stories be too much like Spider Man story, like, like too much like Peter Parker. Yeah, yeah, like he literally just went through a clone saga. Like, I mean, and like, like, and like we'll take a, I'm gonna take a little, little break from talking about her and talk about this for a second. Like, you got you got the Jekyll or uh, Kane, you got uh, Ben Riley, you got uh, even Craven pretending to be Spider Man sometimes, and you get like like uh, Peter Parker from multiple different universes. You got right. so many different like ideas of how Peter Parker looking. He's always written the same way. So like it, it's hard like to detach that idea of seeing like Miles as his own character. But like me saying all that, I will say he was a lot more interesting in the Ultimate Universe before they put him in a six one six. Like that's that's just me talking. Like I I thought he was I, a, I thought he was a lot more interesting in the Ultimate Universe. I would say I agree. I mean he he just he just. And Bendis was writing those stories and like having like his uncle being a prowler, like having that be a whole thing, having like the alternate universe of the X-Men, having like the alternate universe of Moon Knight and Punisher and like uh, and uh, Carpenter, the other Spider-Woman, having all those different versions of all those like Marvel characters in that universe and like having Miles be a part of that. It just felt, it just felt fresh to have like that yes. be like Miles's universe, like them bringing him to the six one six, I thought it was the worst idea that they could possibly do. I I understood it though, because I, I think did. he was trying I to did. step away from the ultimate universe. Like he was the only thing that was keeping that thing going. So no, I, I get it. <laughs> right. I mean, he right. was though. Like if you read the right. novels, like there was no other series in the ultimate universe that was going except for Miles' story. So no, I, I get it. I get it too, but like yeah, I just think they just, I don't know. I think they just kind of hold him back with his stories a little bit. I yeah. don't know. Like like this like like this Riri story it, it just seems real bro like yeah. it seems real like, like it's the real. conclusion it's, of this this uh, issue five it felt very real too like when her exactly. friend is found and she shows up with the gun uh, to take out that that uh, that future mayor who's running yeah it gets it gets dark yeah. and then then uh at the end of Riri her and Miles actually the Riri actually ends with um uh, Miles. Her and Miles, uh, issue six is Doing basically just up. like a little. It's basically just like a little one-off with her and Miles, where like I think they're like trapped in this like cabin or something like that. I can't remember what it actually is, but they're like trapped and they're trapped together. And you know, her and Miles don't really get along like no, that. no. So it's 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 interesting as hell to see them like just they're trapped in this cabin and then they they finally get out, but they have to like work together to fight the villains to get out you know how superhero stories go. yeah and then so they, yeah yeah like they and then it's crazy because like these two really just don't like each other like, it, it makes sense though like because riri and miles like they're nothing unlike each other like miles is more outgoing and sociable he's more of an extrovert and riri is definitely a hardcore genius introvert so yeah i get it mm -hmm. yeah yeah and i feel like he joked a little bit too much for her yeah <laughs> oh yeah I mean, not that I say that Riri doesn't joke herself. Like uh, when she was taking on the class, she's making a lot of jokes. She was actually uh, said one thing like how she was gonna slow clap, but it was like he was about to kill somebody. So probably probably wouldn't have been the best idea. But yeah, Thanks. that's all. That's all Miles does is just joke around. So yeah. Thanks. But yeah, I would love if they if those two. I will. Riri, we know is getting a live action. Yeah. We know it's getting live action. Live action if, they TV ever, show. if they ever make Miles, I need to see their interaction. Like their interaction live screen would be, I mean, live action would be hilarious. Let me ask you this: Like, if we did see that, do you think like like the the masses would like to see like like those two not get along? You know, like like uh, people would appreciate those two characters being like like so limited in black characters not getting along with each other. Like, then people would probably foul if they see something like that. I think. If you make it so when you when you really see their interaction sometime in comics, it's really kind of like a Gina, uh, not Gina, uh, Martin Pam type okay. of interaction where less less on the dislike because you know Martin and Pam like really really hate each other. Like, Do not these, like each other. these two don't like, don't really get along, but they kind of just coexist. If you kind of make it like that, like because. As especially as black people, we all have those type of relationships. Yeah. We all have those, like we all have those Miles and Riri type of relationships. If you make it authentic and good like that, I feel like people can't be mad at that. I know that people would want. It's kind of weird because people already do want them to be together. Yeah. 
like the, the happy like black coalition. Yeah, every every yeah. black person must be happy and alone with each other. And that's yeah, all it must no. be. Yeah. No, we don't need that. We don't need that. These two cannot be cool with each other, like like it is. And I I think that people would be cool with that if if it's as good as some of their exchanges are in the comics. Yeah. I don't see how you could not be cool with that. Like. Uh, I think I'm gonna deviate a little bit. I, I agree with you on that. Like, and that was a good analogy to make, like the the Pam Martin analogy. Like, it's a ninety reference you're just throwing yeah. out there. Wow. <laughs> but uh, I, I I hear it. I hear what you're saying. Like, uh, to see that kind of like interaction with characters like who just who just don't get along, but like will will coexist. Not even for like the sake of friendship, just like you know, because like you're a person. Like, I don't like you, but you know, you're right. there, so whatever. <laughs> but uh, like. I, I get that impression with Miss Marvel sometimes. So like, I, I guess I kind of see why Miles and Miss Marvel go along, but I've never, I haven't read much Champions, so I don't know if, if Riri and and Kamala got along very well. But I feel like they wouldn't get along very well. I can't really remember. Number one, Champions is just kind of weak. Yeah. Like I, I read it because like it has like you know Miles and Riri in it. Right. But all together, it's just kind of weak. Like it's it. It was a poor attempt at a at a. A Teen Titans, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like it had good moments, but like, yeah, damn, I didn't even think about it like that. It really was like a poor attempt to like Teen Titans. They they even like had like young Cyclops inside the group. Yeah. They did have a little punk ass young Cyclops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they did. <laughs> yeah. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, like like you know, that little punk ass Cyclops was cool when he was hanging out with his father, but uh no, no, all Cyclopses are punks. I hate Cyclops. Oh my goodness, you're one of those Cyclops. guys. You're one of those guys. Literally my least favorite. He's probably my least favorite Marvel character. I'm not even gonna lie to Whatever, you. Whatever, man. Cyclops was right. I'm curious what I said. Cyclops was right. Yeah. <laughs> what, wasn't he though? Wasn't Hold on, what he? are we talking about? What are we talking about? After A versus X, and he killed his Xavier. Like he was right. Okay, okay. So that's what people talk about because I never finished, I'm not even gonna lie to you. I I started uh, Avengers vs X Men, but I thought it was trash and the art was horrible. I hate that artist that does that does the little yeah. black looking ass artist. The bubbly kind of superheroes, yeah. Yeah, so I hated that. So I didn't finish X Men vs uh, Avengers, and plus I didn't. It was weak. To start it, was, it, it was a little bit. After, it was a Phoenix Force when they all had the Phoenix Force inside of them, and yeah. and they started going mad with the Phoenix Force power. And you found out that Xavier has been manipulating Scott since he was a kid. Like, mm. uh, Cyclops had a third brother that he didn't know about. Uh, hey, you got another one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's yeah. his name? He's, uh, I think it's Exodus. He's like, he's like the evil son of a bitch. Like, he was like locked away in the cavern. And, like, he's, he, he was like, so like a whole mess of stuff. He was evil. He was pure evil. That's so why Xavier killed, locked away. So he killed Xavier. So for Scott that. did, yeah. Full wall octave beam to like kill. I mean, you know, he, Xavier never says that, and we all know this. So. We all know that. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I'm not on. I'm not on Cyclops side just because fuck Cyclops. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if he was right or not. He not right. I'm gonna change my mind someday. Uh, that's a, that's a goal of mine. Like we're, we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep right. on doing. We're gonna keep on doing comic books. I'm gonna grab like a, a Cyclops book. I'm gonna change your mind someday. Definitely. All right, pick up pick yeah, but yeah. I still is is Wolverine over Cyclops all day. What? Yeah. <laughs> Wolverine? That, that maniac? Are you kidding me? Whatever, man. Yeah. Speaking oh, of maniacs, yeah. though, or lunatics, I should say, Moon Knight. Oh, we segue into Moon Knight? Yeah. yeah. So, I, bro, the I, fact I think that we both thought, recommend we, we both recommend Ironheart, all right? Oh, yeah. Well, I recommend yeah. Ironheart 100%, yeah, 100%. To, to, to anybody. Get get all of these. Get uh, Even, even Bendis' run is really good, yeah. Even Bendis' run. He has... He's doing trash with Justice League right now. This, this dude, I, I tell you, this guy. Oh, man. Yo, you're killing me, dude. You're killing me. He, he, he is, he's killing Justice League, and he killed Superman for me. This man, I just, this, I, yo. You were he, excited about, like, Superman, like, in the Justice League dying. Are you were excited about that. No, I'm, no, no, I mean, no, I'm not talking about Superman dying. I'm just talking about uh, his run of Superman was also trash. Dude, that was good. Are you kidding me? Like, his father came back. jor came back from the dead, dude. That part, was, okay, okay. That part was cool. When it kept going after that, it just kind of got born. Er, like, everything after that until, like, really, after he stopped was just born. He, 
he made Jonathan Ken grow up and like the way he did that like blew my mind. I think about that still today, dude. Do you remember that story? Oh yeah, I, I mean, I do you know everybody mad at that? Dude, I loved it. What what so, better what better way to mess with like with the son of Superman than like have like having someone who's pure evil and looks just like your dad torture you for like a whole year and a half? Like that's come on, dude. Bruh, that's, so come, me and you are probably the only two people in the whole universe that are cool with his age up. Like he needed to grow up. Like like the fans are getting like way too into that fucking kid. Like way too into that kid. They, yo, they they mad. They yo everybody. I, like I said, me and you are probably the only two people that were cool with the age up of John Kent. I'm cool with it. I'm just saying. Hit, but but Ben, this is run with it. However, you say this man's name, them joints was born, and now this man is making Justice League born. He was good, yo. Just let my man's write black characters, just let him do that. That's where he's thriving. <laughs> give, give Christopher Priest white characters and give Ben this black characters. All you gotta do, <laughs> Larry, you're, you're, you're a laugh riot, dude. Yo, I'm serious though. He do great with the black characters. The he does. White ones, I don't know. Yeah, he's a self-hating white man. I don't know. That's, that could be what it is. That could be what it is. You never know. But this uh, this Moon Knight story was pretty good. Like yeah. uh, it was it was a page turner for sure. If uh, if you're a Moon Knight fan, it was like a, definitely a, a a different kind of story of Moon Knight than what you're used to. Still crazy, still like psychotic, but mm. uh, it was more like a like a, a an escape story. If anything else, like would you say it was that? Would you say like say it differently? Yeah, it reminds me of like you ever seen Shutter Island? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It reminds me of something like that, bro. Yeah. Like it was good. So this is actually this is actually the very first Moon Knight story that I ever 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 read. Like so, when I first got this, I got into Moon Knight. I think I can't remember. I think whenever this came out, I think it was what 2016, 2016. Yeah. I remember like when it first came out on the shelves. I was like, I was all over it. Yeah. Facts. So I didn't get it when it came out on the shelves, but I got it when the paperback came out and I read it. Cause Jeff Lemire is one of my favorite comic book writers. And he was hot then too, yeah. Right. And then so I so this was the I was like, you know what? If this is gonna be my first moon night, it gotta be Jeff Lemire. So like I was reading, I knew a little bit of his backstory, and it was and it was dope. But now that I have more now that me and you said we're going to do this and I, I've read more Moon Knight stories since then, uh, since I've read this back then, like the story itself makes it so much more fire. Yeah. It makes it just so much more fire. It has like little hints of his past inside of it. Not much. Right. But uh, it, gives, it gives you enough like, like to wonder like, what the fuck is this dude's story all about? Like three personalities inside of his head? One's a millionaire, right. one's a cab driver? Like what? What? Right. And like and his, his like idea of reality is all skewed. Yeah. All of it. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I will say like my, my first introduction was uh Charlie Husson and David Finch uh Moon Knight. That was my first Moon Knight story which came out back during like the whole Civil War 2008 time. So yeah. Okay. That yeah, yeah. So you've been on them for way longer than I have. <laughs> yeah, sure. Let's say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this joint was real dope because like this story, he's like stuck in uh, the loony bin. Yeah. Right. So actually, I mean, you never really actually find out if he and at the in this story if he's actually in the loony bin or not. But he's like in the loony bin, and I and then all his people, all his friends, like, yeah. Yeah, like all people his, who used to work for him, all by people he knew from the past. Yeah. Yeah, all of them are in there with him. And then like he's going and they're basically saying, telling him that you have uh I'm gonna mess this up. I hate it. Disassociative personality disorder. Mm-hmm. Say that three times fast. I would rather not. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you. But they tell him that you have this, and the one part he they was like, You have this, and he was like, Yes, but no. He's like, Yes, I have it, but I am Moon Knight. And then she, they're like, you're not Moon Knight. You think you're Moon Knight. And he's like, they like, you have this disease. But he's like, yes, but no, I actually am Moon Knight. And then so I think that's just crazy. Like, it really plays with it. Because it's like, Moon Knight, yo, is really batshit crazy. Like, he really, he, like you said, he has, what is that, four? No, Mark Spector Mark is Spector. main person. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lockley, uh, was it Jake Lockley? 
He was like a cab driver. Yeah. Cab driver. Stephen Grant is the billionaire. The billionaire, yeah. Then you have Moon Knight. And then when he's in like his suit, he's like Mr. Moon Knight. Mr. Moon Knight. Like, and that's a new persona that he that he's yeah. taking on since like a uh Konushi, I think it's like Kanushu. Like Kanushu. that. that Kanushu hit the, the guy. <laughs> yeah, the god. Like he has like a new attire also. He used to be like just like a, a floating spirit where you saw his head and everything. But right. since he's wearing a suit, Moon Knight is also wearing a suit. Now now he's Mr. Right. Knight. Yeah. Yeah. So like this story was tough because like and then also yo the art for this so fucking good it feels like it's wacky like it feels like it's like crazy like like he is like you feel yeah, me they, like they give like these little bullet points like where they, they circle in on people's hands where they zoom in like on certain shots that's happening to the characters like so you don't miss it and see how it's going on and like yeah. even though those things happen like Moon Knight still finds a way like like to counteract all those situations or he gets his ass kicked and electrocuted and it starts all over again. It's like a video game sometimes. Yeah. It is. Like, and then this one, it just, I think, so really one reason I said to, to uh, I wanted us to do this one, and since we the show is coming out, is because I think that the show will have a lot to do with this. Because I, like, like, you know, I think that issue alone, I agree with you, yeah. Yeah, because just this him being the mental asylum and then it's like him like, not knowing what's going on. I think the show, like I read a synopsis basically where it kind of proves that. It says like, he kind of doesn't know what's going on. Like he's living as Steve Grant and he totally has forgotten about Mark Spector and everything else. Mm. So that's kind of like an opposite of this where he remembers everything, but they're telling him he's crazy. But like, I feel like that will be it. Like he really is in like a psychotic break like i think the show will literally start with him in a psychotic break like he's crazy he doesn't know what's going on he all over the place which then leads him going back to moon Knight. i will say though like like he does do that a lot in his other comic books also like he does like forget who he is sometimes and forget which personality he is and just go live his life as one of those other personalities and just like you know do to do like oh yeah moon Knight's (laughs) a thing oh (laughs) <laughs> uh, I, I guess I guess uh I guess the guys wake me up to be Moon Knight and like that's usually how it goes. Yeah. Right. Right. So I and guess I guess we'll I guess we'll see like how, how they play it out. I, I honestly think like they're gonna grab something some elements from that from that series and like this uh this Houston run of Moon Knight and they're like, gonna put some of those together like and put like some of that old fan service from the older Moon Knight stories. Mm-hmm. And I like, can see like see what people think about it. I just hope they don't do the reveal towards the end of the series, because that's gonna make me annoyed. What you mean? Reveal of what? Of Moon Knight himself. Like I just hope like Moon Knight doesn't like doesn't appear in like until episode nine or episode ten. Like that. Oh bro, you you are tripping. You are tripping. You are tripping. You don't want Moon Knight to come out to the like the last episode. I don't I don't want him to come out last. I want him to come out like in episode two or three. Bruh. Bruh, you on you on you try to make people mad. You try but like, to make but they mad. do that a lot. They do, but you already know. That, I mean, actually, you know what? You is right. He may not come out to Moon Knight to like mm, mm. Maybe, maybe eight, so they can switch it up a little bit. Maybe eight. Like look at look at uh, Captain but America. It's, look at, it's only six episodes. Oh jeez. Well, there you go. <laughs> All right. Well, that, that that should be fun. I can't. I can't wait. It's gonna be a blast. <laughs> Jeez. Because like you know, Falcon, Falcon with the Soldier, like Captain America, uh, Sam Wilson didn't show up to like the last episode. So you know, there's that. Right. Uh, Scarlet right. Wish, Scarlet Wish didn't do anything like you know really impress him to like you know the last episode. So you know, I guess there's there's that too. So uh, the three Spider Man, like even though I haven't seen it, they didn't show up until like you know the last part of the movie. So you know, right? They, so you may be right. Probably comes Moon Knight at the end of the jump. That's gonna be bothersome as hell. Like the same for She Hulk, man. Like it's gonna. Uh, I'm not really for... excited for She Hulk. No, did I'm not read, excited. Did you read she- Chuck Chuck Soul's run of She Hulk? No, I didn't. It's good. I did. I haven't read much She Hulk, but it the me not being excited has nothing to do with She Hulk. It just oh. I'm not dealing with nothing. I'm not excited for nothing Marvel has for Hulk. Period. Ooh, what's that? After what they done did with Hulk so far, Ugh. I'm not excited for nothing Hulk. The best Hulk we had was the Incredible Hulk in like 2008. Anna? 
Yeah. yeah. So then since then. Van Van got into that role. Like uh, more more so than Norton did, if, if I'm being completely honest. So. So, man, no. Then, no, they done made Hulk a punk. No. Big time. I'm not with it. My man's got smashed by Thanos. Thanos gave my man that hand. Ran away. Ran in. Yo, he ran. Oh, my. Like a little baby. Are you you serious with this? Like, what? It's like, no. He's like, yo, whip my ass. I'm just going to stay in the house. No, no. No. I couldn't do it. But, I mean, I'm still going to watch the show, of course. I'm going to watch it all. I'm just not going to be excited for it. No, I hear you. Like, it... Mm, mm. Huh. Huh. So, yeah. No, I don't... But mm. forget, forget Hulk. I had a question for you. We're going to get off that depressing-ass topic. We it really to- is. It really is. <laughs> I got a question for you. What do you... So, this one, this Moon Knight ends, the one that we read, you never really figure out what actually is going on so my question to you is what is your theory of what goes on see i really wish i had finished this when it came out but uh i feel like he's starting like to find his way back and to find out like how he wants to be moon knight at the end of it and this mm-hmm. whole thing is a journey and a test from this guy like to find out what kind of moon knight he wants to be from here on i think that that's what this is all about okay like, I don't think like, all his friends and buddies are actually dead. I feel like he just want to figure out what kind of Moon Knight he needs, he needs to be for this new era. That's kind of like, that's kind of how Lemire writes stories. It's like that. Like, you know, you don't, you don't know what your true purpose is until, like, you, you know what your true purpose is. Right. Okay. So I, I know what happens in the next part of this. So that's why I was asking you. So I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say what happens, but I just wanted to ask you. Well, you know, not, you, will, you didn't say I was wrong, so I'll take that. Right, I mean, right. but, but I'll, I'll take it. I mean, to be to be <clears> honest, <throat> you're kinda, you're not you're not you're not completely right, but you're basically right. Gotcha. Like, I guess I will say what happens. Like, basically, you saying what type of moon he will be for the new era. Mm-hmm. It's along those lines of what happens. But yeah, but like that, I think. With but just reading through it the whole time, you're just thinking like, yo. Is he really in a sane asylum or is he like somewhere comatose in a dream? Is like, or is he like really fighting monsters? Cause you know, they start coming out. I think they say that he's trapped by like another god or something. He starts thinking mm-hmm. he's like, trapped by like another god. And then so like I'm like, I think that is I think those type of stories are dope where you don't really know what is really happening, which could also happen in the show. We could not really know what the hell is happening until maybe the last episode. Let's be real. Let's be real with each other. Like, come on. Like, we, we, we are both stark comic book guys. Like, you know, balls to bone. Like, we, we love comics. We've been reading comic books for both of us combined probably over 40 years. Like, both yeah. of us. And we, we, we understand, like, like, how TV shows portray things. Right. What? <laughs> Let, yeah. Let's let's be completely let's be completely honest with each other, and I really know. Like, do you think this show is going to be good? Okay, full on honesty, full on honesty, honesty, honesty. Okay, <sighs> bro, I don't know, bro. It's Disney with Moon Knight. Like, like what the hell? <laughs> like, yo, like, like, are you serious? Like, yo, come on, bro. It's Disney with Moon Knight. Like, I really. I think I think I think it's gonna be a soft core version of Moon Knight. I think I like they're gonna probably dive into <laughs> mental illness a lot, like yeah. a lot, a lot. But we not gonna get Moon Knight. We get from comics. No, we are not. One hundred percent not. And I, got, I gotta I gotta tell you, it's gonna piss off a lot of those hardcore Moon Knight fans. Like it's gonna it's gonna make them upset. If we I know I don't get that that one preview where you see like him like just bashing that guy's face, but I feel like every fight scene is gonna be like that. Like you we won't see what, nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Well you won't see anything at all. You just see like his hand moving and hear like the sound effects, and that's it. Yo, like, no. 
no, I'm I'm totally with you, yo. Like I'm I like I'm hyped for the show. Don't get me wrong, yeah, because it's, really it's live action and the trailer looked like it was gonna be good. And we finally but, get to see it, like you know, we never seen it before. So I hear you. Right, but no, I'm already when they said they were doing Moon Knight, the second they said it, I sat in in my head like this is Disney doing Moon Knight. Mal- I was like Malcolm, Malcolm, don't don't go into thinking this the Netflix series. No. This is Disney doing Moon Knight. You're not gonna get what you want, like, cause I mean, come on, bro. It's it's Moon Knight. Like, I don't, I don't understand how you gonna do Moon Knight on Disney. I I said it a thousand times. It should be on Hulu. Period. It should yeah. be. It should be on Hulu. Like Disney owns Hulu essentially now. That's where it should be. And I really think they're gonna need something to compete with Peacemaker. There. Right. I said it. Right. Because Peacemaker, right. Peacemaker is like the number one show right now, and like people are loving it. Have you, are you watching Peacemaker? I, I paused it like in the middle of episode five, and like it's just good. Like I don't even like James Gunn, and like I, it's good. It's like really. I don't good. like so. I'm still like, I'm like in the middle. I'm really in the middle because it's like I don't like James Gunn neither. But like I, I'm in the middle because it's like there's times where I'm like dying. I'm like yeah. okay, this shit is hilarious. Then other times like okay. Yeah. I don't need more of this joke, you know, yeah. like the joke could be over. And then like the action scenes are actually pretty good. Like when they get to really fighting and shit, like the action scenes are cool. Like it's, I'm really just really in the middle. Like it's mm-hmm. times where like I'm loving it and it's times where I'm like, okay, this is whatever. But, but it actually is like a, it's a real <laughs> interesting show. Like it's still at the same time. You feel me? And they probably, they like you said, they will need something to compete but I don't think they ever will, bro. I don't see this is the thing with Disney. I don't think they're gonna try to step out their lane. You feel me? Because it's their lane and it's been making the money. Hit, Hit Monkey did a pretty good job of getting outside that lane. Oh, I need to watch that, John. Hit, Hit Monkey did a really good job of getting outside that lane. Hit Monkey, if if we want to do a competition with like with uh, a Marvel program to Peacemaker, uh, I honestly think Hit Monkey could possibly be it. Like, but the thing is, nobody's gonna, nobody really knows that Hit Monkey is a Marvel show. You feel me? They, like, blast, not, they, they plastered it like crazy. Like, this is Marvel, this is Marvel. But, like, you're right, they don't. But nobody still is gonna connect it to like MCU. Mm. Nobody's gonna think about it like that. So, that's oh. where they have the, they, they can, they did that with that. But, like, Moon Knight, you, there's no way you can not say that's like not MCU related. And the so, Mar- it won't even be Marvel. It'll be, it, it'll be MCU's Moon Knight. It won't be Marvel's Moon Knight. It'll be MCU's Moon Knight. Disney's Moon Knight is what. Ooh, that's what I. That's what I say. That's what, that's so, that's how I call it. So are you thinking? So all right, on a scale of trash to fire, what are you thinking is going to be? Uh, warm water. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it's going to be. I I'm not even going to lie to you. I'll watch it. Six episodes, I'll, I'll watch it. But I think it would be 100%. one more. Like, oh, hmm. yeah. I mean, I guess I'll just get a towel and wipe this off. Sure. I'll, I'll just forget about this later on. That's but that's how it's going to be. I, I honestly think that that's what it is. And like you said before, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to be excited for it. But like, I feel it's going to be just like a, a tempered bath with warm water. And it's going to be disappointing. I, I, yeah. Why, bruh, bruh, here's the thing. Why wasn't this part of the Netflix series? He's a defender, so he should have been. It was they did street level. He's a they defender. did it, and bro, it's mental illness. Like you could have done on Netflix, you could have delved into it. You didn't. You could. You could have not. They did Jessica that. Jones. Are you kidding me? The way they did Jessica Jones and Daredevil and Punisher, like like that would have been that would have been uh, perfect in that wheelhouse. Yeah, whatever. They they really it, dropped the ball. It, yo, it would have been easily okay, 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 okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We may be going a little off topic, but we got to. So, since we're talking about this, it's in the same realm. You asked me this question, I'm gonna ask you honestly, how do you feel about Blade? The new one that's coming out, the show, yes. Uh, I'm in 110, like, regardless. you don't feel like it's gonna be the same thing as Moon Knight. I, I don't think like they're, they're gonna try to kick off the Marvel Knights. Blade. Here's my thing though. It's vampires on Disney. I mean, so they, they got they gotta rebrand themselves into like a Marvel Knight studio. They have to. 
Bro, it's the only way it's gonna what? work. Because if they what? don't, it won't work. Yeah, it has to be. It has to be like yeah, it was the Marvel Studio. They have to be a Marvel Knights studio. It has. It has to be. That. Otherwise, it will not work. There was talks to like Disney having like an adult uh, side. Disney Plus having like an adult side to it. Yeah, I heard about that too. Yeah. Which, bruh, if since they got since they're since they have Deadpool now, they bruh, they have to. And they bring my Domino to. to MCU also, yeah. Bro, if you're gonna do Deadpool, there's no way you can give us Deadpool like I, I won't even watch it. I won't even no. I won't even like take part in it. Are you kidding me? It won't even happen. You cannot give us Deadpool like. You cannot give us I, Deadpool. I, I, like. I will not. If he's hanging out with Tom Holland and like, you know. Like Spider Man, uh, no home is yet to come. Like, no, with Deadpool, feet, like, you lost your mind. Not happening. <laughs> not, not gonna happen. <laughs> but yeah, that I don't know, bro. Like, it's I love that they're doing these dope ass street level heroes, yeah. like, like Blade and Moon Knight, which you know they're definitely gonna probably cross over at some point in time, but it's like it's. Disney, like I'm still yeah. excited for both. I'm still excited for both. My man's uh, what's his? Forget his first name, Ali. My man, yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you so much. Him playing, I think him playing Bleed is gonna be fire. I think he gonna kill it. All in, all in, hundred percent. Kill it. I will say that like, I I do want these to do well, Moon Knight and Blade, so I can see a 100%. White Tiger TV show. I want a White Tiger TV show. So, like, I want these to do well, so like we can get a White Tiger TV show. So, Let's see if that happens. I mean, she's like she's like the answer. She's like Marvel's vixen. So you know, get it done. Yeah, yeah. get it done. Essentially, like she don't do like one thing, but like you know, can we get a vixen TV show first? I got good one. Did you did you watch the CW? The legend. I watched the animated one. Was it okay? I mean, did I mean did you like it? Because I thought it was okay. The animated one, I liked it. I thought it was really. I thought they did a good job telling her story. I wish it would have been like more of a live action feel, but I thought the animated one was was good. Like it, it, it holds true to the story. It had the same animation as uh, Flashpoint. Like it was, it was good. But it was just for me. I felt like I wanted more. Yeah, I think that was my only problem with it. Like it was. It should, okay it should turn into a series. Yeah, like so. Uh, that's what that's what really made me mad because I'm like, okay, I feel like you could have fleshed this out so much more in a series and been better. Yep, agree. Like, like, cause Vixen, bro, like Vixen, her story is too easy for me. I don't see why she hasn't had a live action. Dude, she, and like, she's OP. Like, uh, like people don't seem to think that she is, but she's an OP character. Bro, she can use the powers of any animal. Like, like, come on, bro. Like, like the Impossible Squid. Like she can just like you know put herself as a kid and like have herself grow back. Like she can she can turn herself into like a hardened beetle and like she took a hit from Superman while she was in space when she was a hardened beetle. Like she can do whatever she wants to, but by, by any animal. In that moment, she don't gotta see the animal nothing. She just gotta boom powers. <laughs> you feel me? Like I don't know. They they dropping the ball with my girl Vixen. Sleep on her. They sleep on her way too much. I hear you completely. But uh, that's the that's the episode, man. That's the first episode. Common yeah. points. We may yeah. do this bi weekly. I'm not sure if we do this weekly or not. Like, uh, but we will give you more episodes to come. Uh, I have no idea what the next issue is that we're gonna read. I have no clue. I have I'm, no clue either. Let's do, let's do some indie stuff. Let's go with something that's not DC or Marvel. I got you. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll stick to like like any stuff that people know about. But definitely, I haven't okay. read Better Root yet. Bitter Roots is fire. Yeah, I heard like I heard nothing good things about Bitter Roots. So Bitter and that's Roots gonna be a TV fire. show soon too. It is. So uh-huh. You wanna do Bitter Roots? Uh, that's my that's my pick. Yeah. All right, so we just need a second one? Mm-hmm. All right, I'll think of a second one. All right. Well, well we know one, Bitter Roots, definitely. And we, we we talk shop afterwards too, apparently. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm D, after another talk. Uh, you're a nerd of your nerd. Thanks, uh, thanks. For, like, this is fun, man. Like, I'm glad this is a thing. I'm glad this is too. It's dope talking comics with people. It is, especially with people like you know who loves the loves the craft, loves like you know not just the pages, but also like the artists and the writers, like in like the world of comicdom. Like, it's nice talking about stuff like that. Facts. It always is. It is. Uh, well, we'll give you a time. We'll give you a date. And uh, make sure you follow our Instagram page. We'll let you know when that's going to be. Uh, and I'll read and read for Moon Knight and Ironheart for me.
Definitely. That's four fires for Moon Knight, five fires for Riri. That's your that's your scoreboard. I like that. Yes. Yeah. Hilarious. Uh, that's hysterical. All right. Uh, until next time, you guys take it easy. Peace, y'all.